Best of r slash tales from tech support episode 28. Short background. I work at a college, and we don't have a formal tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, etc. Dot. One of our departments decided to purchase this expensive new equipment without our knowledge or blessing. We have taken weeks trying to figure out how to make this new system work securely on our network. We finally delivered it back to the department and had to work with the equipment vendor to configure the machine. They had to call their tech support because we have a firewall and ACL set up to protect the SQL database that the equipment runs. Players. TS equals vendor tech support. VR equals vendor rep. Who is tech illiterate. CW equals co-worker. Essentially tier 3. ME equals guess who. Essentially tier 2. TS remoted into machine. I need someone to fill out the UAC prompt. ME types in password. TS. And again here. ME types in password. TS. I don't know how you do this. That is such an insanely long password. Thank you. Next. I worked in a tech support department with lots of standardized hardware imaged with the same build and being sent out. My job at the time was troubleshooting a new image. There was a new person there. We will call him Kevin. Kevin was very young. He had never worked a day in his life. But he did a course at uni so he must know more than everyone in the room. So I said to a manager I would go and image some PCS and Kevin comes dashing after me like a new puppy who just learned to sit. Kevin, do you want me to show you how to use the imaging software? Me. No thanks I've been using it for years. I'm good Kevin. I studied it at uni maybe I know some tricks you've not seen. Me. Okay sure you image the PCS and I will watch. Always up for learning new tricks. So Kevin takes one look at the screen and gets confused. Kevin, this isn't the one I studied at uni. Me. Shall I show you how to do it? Kevin. Rather deflated now. Okay. Thank you. Next. At my office, we lease all our computers through Dell. It works out well, because everyone gets a new computer every three years staggered throughout the office. We have a few dedicated account people, who I usually just forward the previous lease quote to and say please duplicate this. Barring any personal anecdotes you may have, I find that the service team I had was quite helpful and speedy when it came to new orders and sorting out issues. The current model we were on was the Optiplex 3050. There was a new representative who responded this time saying that the 3050 has been discontinued and the only close one available was the 3070. Okay, fine, except, she says the only difference in the configuration is the hard drive, which is a 500GB SATA SSD rather than a 128GB SATA SSD. The 3070 does not have a smaller hard drive option. I usually choose a small SSD because it keeps the cost down and all documents are stored on our network drive anyway, but this is quite the jump. I look at the quote in more detail and in the spot for the drive option. It says 2. 5 500 gigabytes, 5400 RPM, SATA which leads me to believe this is a traditional hard drive versus the SSD, despite what she said in her email. I have found that for whatever reason, hard drives slow down the Microsoft Office suite tremendously compared to the SSDs, so I question it and cite my suspicions. She gets back to me a full day later with a new quote for a slightly different model, which supports a hard drive without any RPM. Lovely. Thank you. Next. This happened last night. I work for a large wireless telecom company and am an engineer for the call processing equipment. However, we have strict guidelines for maintenance that is applicable in all our call processing buildings and in addition I also have to support other groups equipment that happens to be located in my facilities. Earlier this week, I was notified that a national group needed to have dollar sign vendor replace a memory module in their room in my building on a server I was not responsible for, but since they had no local techs I would need to give access. They had to kill power, which per local guidelines meant it was to be done between midnight and 5am, which is fine as that's my normal shift. The day started off wrong, as the UPS courier called me just before 10pm saying he was on site. My alarm was set for 10pm, despite my instructions saying I would not be on site until 11.15, so set delivery for 11.30. I woke up and got ready quickly, and got to the site before 11pm just so I can sign for this package and not make the dude wait much longer. 
Around midnight dollar sign vendor of the equipment showed up to do the replacement. Normally I would hand off the package I received, show him his equipment and he does his work. Oh how wrong I was. He came back confused because the dollar sign vendor server was not in the rack on its provider rails, but was on a rack mounted shelf. But it was not moving and he could not see why. I gave assistance, and after a bit we realized that not only was it not mounted with the server's provided rails, there was a makeshift strap with bolts and nuts mounted midway through the server from the shelf to the server. In addition, after removing those, the server would still not move, despite it looked like it was just sitting on the shelf. After taking a flashlight and looking underneath the shelf, I could see white blotches through some of the slits showing that whoever installed this, used 3M double sided sticky foam tape to secure the server to the shelf. Not only is this stupid and a problem, but the fact the server's rack ears blocked access from the front in removing the shelf ear screws from being removed, it was a catch 22. I could not just unscrew the shelf since I was blocked. After quite a bit of deliberation and dollar sign vendor saying they would not touch this setup, I found myself doing the last thing I ever thought I would have to do as an engineer. I went and scrounged, at 1.30am a huge slim party knife slash scraper and a rubber mallet, and was chiseling underneath that server to cut away that foam tape from the front slash rear slash sides until it came free from its prison. Afterwards, I went back to my desktop to I am with the person who owns a platform, who does not live on this side of the country, and we decided we need to go back in history, find what company we paid to do that install, and ban them from working in the company ever again. Because, WTF, worst part is, I have some equipment in simplex, not in redundancy of my own that I needed to work on, but I spent all my time in the maintenance window on a system that I don't own, but I am the local contact to give access to. Thank you, next. In the mid 90s I took a job in publishing, I was the only person with a computer in the building so as the company grew I became tech support and the network guy and later the internet guy and so on. So being support I obviously supported myself. I had my own office and our staff would routinely pop in for all sorts of reasons as I was the go-to guy for everything we published. One guy, let's call him Greg, was a little more regular to pop in my cube for business and other things like going to lunch or whatever. We had a good work bond and became friends outside of work too. My computer ran like clockwork 95% of the time. The 5% of the bad time seemed to be when Greg came in the room. More likely than not when he appeared my machine would simply freeze. No error message. No reboot. Hard freeze. Power off and on to restart. I began blaming Greg. Mostly as a joke. That my computer knew he was there and didn't like him so it refused to work. It made for a good laugh and never failed to be funny. Needless to say I spent hours trying to resolve my freezing and never could. When Greg was around. It could just freeze again without notice. OS reinstalls, disk checks, etc. Nothing fixed the issue. One day my vehicle was at the mechanic and I knew that Greg lived out past me so I asked if he could give me a lift on his way home. Greg agreed but explained that he had bought some brakes for his own car that were the wrong ones and said he needed to stop at the parts store to exchange them, if that was okay. Of course it was okay. We stopped at a particular nationwide known auto parts place and he walked in with his box of brakes. The guy behind the counter asks how to help and Greg explains the above and asks to exchange. Sure thing the guy says. Let me look it up and asks for Greg's name. He tells him and the guy types. Suddenly he says, what the hell, I was just this thing, and smacks across a few keys without any response on screen. Frozen solid. Greg and I both look at each other, laugh and then I exclaimed, he did it. From that day forward Greg was required to stop at my door and knock before getting permission to enter so that I could save my work in case he locked my machine. The lockups never went away and still only occurred with Greg present. I've lost touch with Greg in the years since but I hope he's still sharing this same story with others when their computers lock up. TLDR. Computer locks up when Greg is merely present. It becomes a joke until Greg locks up the computer at the auto parts store too then Greg must announce office visits so work can be saved. Thank you. Next. Backstory I was in the army working as an IT tech. This happened on a Wednesday afternoon after lunch. I needed a new military ad card. Mine was getting ready to expire in a couple days. 
for those of you who have been in the military can understand how entitled personnel can be. Me I need to get a new agenda up today. My current one is getting ready to expire. SFCG1 help desk puke I'm sorry, we're closed. Me it doesn't look closed if you are at the help desk. SFCG1 help desk puke I'm sorry we're closed. Me so. No way of getting a new id today. SFCG1 help desk puke not today. Me okay. I hope you keep that in mind. I walk out. Fast forward two weeks later. 1215 hours. In my office eating lunch. SFCG1 help desk puke. Flies through the office door. SGT Nelson. My computer is messed up and I need it fixed right now. Me I'm sorry. We're closed. SFCG1 help desk puke I need it fixed right now. I have some very important work to do. Me I'm sorry. We're closed. SFCG1 help desk puke I'm giving you a direct order. Really? Is that the best they can pull? Me why is it? I go to your office after lunch to get a new id and you're closed. Yet when you think something is important, I'm supposed to drop everything to come bail your ass out? By the way, direct order doesn't work here. You don't write mine coa. You're not in my chain and my Carl's office is down the hall and I imagine he is eating lunch as well. Feel free to barge in on his lunch hour and let him know. Otherwise, fill out a work order, two weeks, and we'll process it in the order it was received to come work on your computer. Meanwhile, there's the door and my lunch is getting cold. SFCG1 help desk puke sulks out of the office. At 1400, I wander down to see what the problem was and fix it. I remind the G1 puke that service goes both ways. Thank you. Next. So this post reminded me of a story of outsourced tech ineptitude. This took place quite a few years ago when I was working for a financial company that no longer exists. This company had, at the time, roughly 300-400 branch offices and all of them used the same model small form factor PCS from a popular PC maker that I'm sure you can guess. Anyway, this took place during the height of the issues caused by the use of huge batches of bad capacitors in all kinds of electronics. By this time our help desk had become pros at handling MOBO replacements for these machines and were fielding 3-5 replacements a day. Because all but the two local branches were spread out all over the country and because these were warranty replacements it was the outsourced tech support for dollar sign MF that handled the actual, physical replacements. Aside from the usual scheduling slash logistical issues and other normal hiccups when involving three or more parties, things went mostly smoothly but this particular tech decided to make things interesting. Dollar sign me equals me, at least I think it does. Dollar sign HD1 equals first level help desk tech. Dollar sign BME equals branch manager. Dollar sign MF equals manufacturer. So I'm working on my tickets when one of the first level help desk guys walks up to me with a look on his face that was a mix of frustration, confusion and bewilderment. Dollar sign HD1, crack tech. I'm working with dollar sign MF on a MOBO replacement for dollar sign office and the tech is having some trouble. I'm not really sure what to do here. Dollar sign me. Okay, what's the issue? Did the wrong part come in or is the tech late or something? Dollar sign HD1. No the tech is in the office now but he says he can't get the mobo out. Dollar sign me. What does he mean? Like it's stuck or he can't open the case or what? Dollar sign HD1. No, he says he can't get the screws out. Dollar sign me. He what? Dollar sign HD1. He says the screws won't come loose. Dollar sign me. He's turning them the right way and knows there's four of them right? Dollar sign HD1. He said yeah to both when I asked. I have him on the phone. Want to talk to him? Dollar sign me. Yeah, let's go to your desk and put him on speaker. We walk back to his desk but when we take the tech off hold he's hung up already. I tell dollar sign HD1 to call him back and let me know when he's got the guy. A few minutes later dollar sign HD1 walks over to my desk again. Dollar sign HD1. It gets better. Now he wants to take it back to his office in order to try an electric screwdriver. Dollar sign me. What? No. Let me talk to him. Cut to a few minutes of me asking this guy if he's doing this right and trying not to ask him if he's capable of breathing and chewing gum at the same time after which we tell him to wait for us to call back before he does anything else. 
we reached out to dollar sign mf with basically wtf is wrong with this guy please send someone else only to be told that he's it for that area right now and the soonest they could get someone else would be almost a week i don't recall the reason why but we couldn't wait that long for this office so after some talk with my boss and his boss we decide to let the tech take it to his office with a strict time limit of an hour to have it back in the office and agreement from dollar sign mf that they were responsible for it in every conceivable way just under an hour later I get an IM from $HD1 that $BM had called to let us know that the tech had returned the machine to the office. $Me, so did he finally get the damn thing fixed? $HD1, nope, he said he still couldn't get the screws out. $Me, what the actual fuck? What is this guy doing? $HD1, no idea. $Me, so what is this idiot doing now? Dollar sign HD1. He told dollar sign BM that he was going to contact dollar sign MF and find out what they wanted to do. I go tell my boss this news to which he is as blown away as I am. While talking with him dollar sign HD1 walks up with the coup de grass. Dollar sign HD1. You're not going to believe this. Dollar sign me. Oh god. What now? Dollar sign HD1. Dollar sign BM just called and said he got the screws out. Dollar sign me. WTH, how? Dollar sign HD1, said he remembered his small tool kit in his truck, grabbed the screwdriver from it and they came right out with no problem. Dollar sign me, shock silence. Dollar sign HD1, he also said the guy left the new mobo there and he got it swapped out but wasn't sure about the connectors. Dollar sign me, looks at boss and gets a shrug and a nod in return. Dollar sign me, walk him through reconnecting everything and have him send you a picture of it before you try to power it on to verify. If it doesn't work then have him swap it back and we'll call dollar sign mf back about it. Dollar sign hd1 is able to walk dollar sign bm through everything and they get the machine back up and running with no problem. We make sure to let dollar sign mf know the status and that, under no circumstances is this tech to be dispatched to a location of ours again. That was pretty much the end of it but to this day I still occasionally wonder what that guy was doing when he was trying to take those mobo screws out.